G'day crew, my name is Luke from Aquatic Rehab Spearfishing and this is an outdoor rehab vlog. Grab a tea, coffee or a beer or something, not out of my fridge but your own. Now just before we get into this one guys, the next episode I'm going to work on is either going to be a fellow deer vlog, uh, where me and Stafford and Renee go out, uh, the freezing cold uh, down Ruahini, hunt up through some pines and, and up a river, work over a couple of deer. Either that one or uh, a dive with Wayne where we get into some boar fish and hang out with heaps of sharks, heaps of juvie sharks. So you guys can vote in the comments what one I should work on next. Uh, that'll be mean. Now if you're into this kind of pig hunting... <laughs> then this video might not be for you because this is just pig shooting basically some of the best wild pork that I've ever had because these pigs are on an avocado orchard and it makes them real nice and fat and um, even though it is gentleman's hunting the uh, the first time he invited me out it was actually pretty miserable so yeah shot down to meet him and uh, we basically had a couple of days or one arvo in the next day kind of quite promising early on we have river there indicating Vizsla first little spot we checked out dogs indicating pretty hard over a little pump come up over the top of it and there's four pigs there uh, what I call bacon seeds pointless to take just at that size so yeah just left them head up to the other end of the farm after that there's sort of one gully where Mike shot quite a nice boar yeah basically did a big nice stealth approach up into this gully slash bush edge and then uh, yeah just before we could get the spotlight down in there um, Riv decided to get peeled on an electric fence <laughs> And yeah, basically just decided to spook the whole valley and probably the whole bloody farm. So, called it. And then, uh, yeah, the next day we rolled in the rain, brought a bloody 20 gauge for the turkeys, see if we can smack one of them over. So we got the shotgun. Oh yeah. Um, actually stalked the whole day with the dog in the rain. Like, you know, in the Maori times, you come down from Polynesia and then you're making this freezing wet shit hole. And you, you just gotta survive off the land like a machine. What would you do? Like, where do you fucking start from? You gotta be a fucking hard kid. Um, up through a big valley and blooming all these little bush bits and nice little marshes and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, pointless thing, you know, even if the pigs are hunkered down in that and the wind isn't really that good, the dog's not, he's sort of picking up on stuff and then really couldn't connect. So yeah, kind of waste of time at that, that time of the day when they're not moving. Um, head back to the old roller for a couple of go natives in the miserable rain and uh, they're pretty good actually can recommend them so the uh, sort of army army ration meals uh, just heat them in the jet boil and uh, off you go lightweight bush meal um, come across a little mob of turkeys and sacked one it actually went about 40 so i was kind of glad to have the dog there because i actually had quite a bit of trouble finding it i can made it a few way told you the dog's fine then yep 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 Big fucking bird, boy. Take your time. Oh, yeah. How do you reckon? Ten kilo? Twelve kilo? Fucking eight. Eight kilo. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, twenty pound. Yeah. Big old bird. I should have just smacked those other ones over, but I was kind of like, nah, we got the one. <laughs> Did you say that you brought? Oh, I could put that in with the. You can chuck it in here. Yeah. No, I could put it in with the pork. Yeah, and fucking chill it down. Bag and it'll keep it cold. South Carolina is pretty good this time of year. <laughs> Fuck, that's loud, but. Yeah, basically called it that day. Ended up going home with a bit of turkey and I think I did a bit of slow cooking with it. I've got the footage, I'll show it here. What was it? A bit of bloody garlic and onion and stuff like that. Put it in the slow cooker and just let it go for a good few hours and then, yeah, a bit of turkey. Wild well, turkey test. Pretty breasty meat, you know, like it sort of wants to be dry but because I did it for so long in the slow cooker, like six hours or something, it's turned out pretty good. It's not um, epic like blooming 
really fat wild pork, but yeah, it's something to eat. So yeah, I ended up rolling back down, and uh, as soon as we got on the property, Mike spotted a couple of seeds out off the um, left-hand side of the car, off, off the, the drive. I had these like brand new hand loads that I'd done for the 08. Thought bugger it, why not test them? Pretty small pigs, but I was gonna sort of drop it all off at Fitty Anger Butchery. Yeah, basically get them to get it done, so the more meat the better, really. So yeah, first pig, shoot at it, and I didn't hear a connection. I think there's a bit of pine blocking that uh, bounce back, so I was sure I hit it, but Mike said I missed it. Is it recording? Missed it? No, I should have smoked it. Missed it? No, I should have smoked it. Sorry, I screwed the pooch on the um, recording. I thought bugger it, better shoot at another one. Um, but pretty surprised if I if I didn't hit it because we had the had the 08 pretty dialed there. Um, smack over another one and and watch it go down. Can you go for? The black one in the middle. Smashed it. And uh, then we just thought we we're going to go hunt the uh, the other side of the farm and just go get those ones later on. Find another quite fast moving mob. Yeah, eventually just pumped a bullet into another one. Yeah, boy. It looked way bigger than it was. At least you're not that big pig. But doesn't matter. Off to the butchery it goes. So, yep, sorted that one out, took it back, and then went and, uh, yeah, it did, turns out the, we did have two other pigs there. Uh, best thing to do is just go to where you think the shot was and just cut right across the, at a right angle to the wind, and then, yeah, as soon as the, the wind off the dead animal hits the dog's nose, bang, pulls you in, so easy as. And, uh, yeah, got a few pictures of these pigs on the roller bonnet with the dog. RIP to the roller, it's gone now. Yeah, I mean, can't moan, one hour or something. So yeah, the next day the plan was skin those pigs, drop them off to the Fitianga Butchery, uh, to Arthur there, and then go for another hunt in the afternoon. And um, Arthur hooked me up some Kranskis and uh, smoked kingfish, which is really bloody good. And that's where I got the idea to go and drop some kingfish off to him in our last vlog with Mike. Uh, we actually go out and target some kingfish and get them down to him. So highly recommended uh, fitting a butchery there. Does a real good job of smoking it. And uh, yeah, hooked Mike up with some too and, and uh, he thought it was epic. It's delicious, man. Now, yeah, we headed back out and we did something called gentleman's hunting switcheroo. But basically, because we got reception, I stayed up where Mike had shot quite a nice boar in the past. Haven't seen much today. There's quite a lot of fresh rooting around, but... Mike's just cut off down the back there to see if he can see any, and I'm just watching a little glass and spot down here. He shot down this um, clay track. The plan was if he, we got two sets of eyes are better than one, and he actually messaged me saying there's some rustling or something going on in the bush. Mike's texted me and said he can hear some in the scrub, but it's quite scrubby, and the wind's not great, so... Pop down and have a wee look. Don't have much light left, though. Now it was starting to get dark, I didn't have much confidence. I got in my bag and, and put the GoPro in my pocket, put my head torch on my head, not on, because <clears throat> it wasn't dark yet, but just, um, and I should have left the GoPro on, because I, when I come down the bottom of the hill there, dog locked up, a couple of pigs walk out just on my right and walk right up in front of the dog, and crack one on the head. Yo. Got a bigger one. Yeah, big sour one. Yeah, man. Yeah, fucking bad. Oh, no, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's a big girl, eh? That's how it went down. Yeah, this big sow just trots out and poleaxes her in the head. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's, what's that, about a 15, 20 kilo pig down there. Put the GoPro back on, 
get down there and it's just a beast. Man, that's sick. So there must have been a few because I got down to the fence and I've gone, I've gone through, I've like stealth as on the gate thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've gone like, okay. And then I come through and I've gone, I'm something going, and I'm like, nah, man, they're here. Yeah, hard. And you then you and you, and so you, you and River just stealthed it as down here. We're quite like blase, and then really? River was indicating quite hard. She's fat, <laughs> man. She's bigger than that boar I shot, man. She's got to be, she's going to be over 100 pounds, man. <laughs> yeah, she's over 100 pounds. That's, that's what you come here for. Yeah, bro. That's, that's our sausages, that's eh? That's the business right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, now you're excited, River. He's like, yeah, that's a big pig. I'm frothing on it, man. Look, I, the bullet went through its ear, man. No way, so it went through the ear and into the brain. Yeah. That was a beautiful shot, man. Yeah, she came right into me and Riv was just like looking right at her and just smashed her in the head. And there was a ball with her. And the ball was like quite a mean ball, but he was like, it was probably like a quarter smaller than her. And um, he nearly ran into me, yeah, he got around there and he got caught up in some stuff there and then I was kind of tempted to smash him and then I just, he winded me and went, didn't really have a proper shot, so. And then when I seen the state of this thing, <laughs> I'm kind of glad we didn't pull the trigger on it. Because <laughs> this girl's a bloody big rat, man. I said you'd be taking a fat pig home. <laughs> this was it. Fuck yeah. I didn't think it was that big when it, so I can't even gauge the size of these things, man. I don't know. Even though this is like gentleman's sort of paddock hunting and shit, we are quite away from the vehicle. Yeah. So I'll pull the guts out of it. Fucking good, good animal though. Should be 60 kilos, eh? You reckon? I'll take the picker up. It's a wild guess, but. Well, the dog's 29. <laughs> This is how hardcore this hunting is. One of the bros had actually heard the shot from his house and was like, oh yeah, do you need a hand or something? Is that Toby? <coughs> hey, mate. Hey. How are is you? it just you dragging around, is it? Yeah, we do need a hand because it's a bloody big animal and um, we were quite far away. So he brings his woman car up to the top of the track that would come down. So we basically just have to gut this thing and, and drag it up the hill. Gentleman's experience. Yeah, it's a bit of fun dragging that the whole way across. Yeah. If it's 120, eh? Alright. Probably. Pretty much just needed a blooming glass of whiskey and someone to bloody bone it out for us, really. Yeah, Toby yeah, helps us out. We get it back to the to the roller, get it in. Put it in the back seat on a tarp. And this is how high maintenance uh, pointers are. If you've got experience with them, they're pretty pretty guardy. The, the males with their, with their gear. The dog's been good as gold with Mike for as long as he's known Mike. Put this big pig in the back where a dog's supposed to be and River has nowhere to sit and that's pissing River off. And Mike's in the front next to me. So this, this is how high maintenance they are. Riv squeezes through on the left hand side of Mike between the seat and the bloody door, the side of the car and I could just tell something wasn't right because he didn't have anywhere to sit, he was getting pissed off. He basically started growling at Mike, got Mike to get out of the car. Oh, yeah. You're probably thinking how you're going to Being a real pest, wouldn't let Mike near the car because basically River wants a seat and the whole dominance ladder, uh, piss off. <laughs> I was like, well Mike, you just get in the back with that pig. River wouldn't let him near the car. <laughs> God, idiot. We had to get out, drag the pig out, put it in the boot, and then, good as gold, happy as Larry, Riv got back in the back of the car, let Mike near the car again, sweet as, and it was just all about seating. Transfer the pig to the back, because the dog's upset. What a hand, man. That's it. We're okay again, there's no conflict in the car. <laughs> Funny, hey, a dog right. so needy. Place, He's okay. so needy that he needs like a little space. And it even gets to the point where if you take a corner too hard or whatever and he gets upset while he's lying there trying to have a snooze, he'll start growling. It's ancient blood, the visitor is fucking quite weird, but yeah, just a little insight into the, the strangeness of some pointer breeds. So yeah, long story short, got back to Mike's, hung the pig up. I think it was about shy of 120 pound gutted, maybe 116 or so. It's coming up. Yep. You got it. You got it. Yep. Yeah, nice. 
I skinned it up the next day. It was just fat as fat, like might as well have been lying in snow. It's the morning, next morning, it's pretty cold. Piggy's been hanging up. I've got the fat on it. Yeah, I'll get the skin off it, try to do a, keep it tidy, and then, um, yeah, get it to the butcher, and I'll, I'll show you guys the final result when it gets to home. Uh, you know, dough bleeds and that kind of thing, so that can be, you know... The amount of fat on this. Kind of it's Snow White. On, um, you know, I'll give it a rush at the five, head. ten minutes after it. It's a wee bit lighter now that it's been skinned. Bloody 40 kilos, so the head and the skin is 15 kilos, so that's a bit better. Mummified, he said. Yeah, man. No dirt off the car on it. It's got a 40 kg thing in the like. After I shoot it, it's a big fish, eh? Yeah, hard. Oh my gosh, like. That's big, eh? That just makes me go, oh, how much would it actually pull? Now I can look at sort this of fat. I mean, half imagine here. Yeah, look at it's whipping the sheet down. So good. That's a sick pig, man. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, can we flip it around onto my shoulder this way? What do you want to carry it over your shoulder? Yeah, like that. Right. How are you? Good, how are you, sir? Yeah, good. Thanks for that bit of fritz and keeping it Oh, good, uh, fancies. That was me, eh? That's why 18 kilos of sausage, probably? Give or, give or, give or take it. Oh, from those three? Yeah, that's your picture. Oh, me. Sweet, bro. All right. Thanks for that, bro. Cheers, guys. See you, mate. Dropped it off to Arthur, and he just, uh, yeah, sorted out the whole lot. So we had four pigs there. Went back to Mike's, had another brew, played a bit of bloody guitar with him. To chill out, and then I shot back up to Auckland, and... Um, what Arthur did was send all this pork back up to me in poly boxes, and it just arrived the day before uh, the second lockdown that we had. Luckily, it all had arrived, and um, yeah, I'll show you guys what was in the what was in the poly boxes. It's just epic. Sweet. So I think the pork's arrived. Ooh, we've got bacon, wild pork. Cream skis, bloody shrapnel sausages. Um, that is epic. Christmas ham. Let's see what's in box number two. Ooh. Sausages, bacon, bloody roast looking luxury. Fillet. Oh man. More of the goods, look at it all. Fuck, it's a lot of bacon. It's epic. Rice. Sweet. So yeah, that's a pretty, what, two Arvo hunts? Gone back into lockdown again yesterday, so um, that's perfect timing, so. Holy, look at that. Yummy. So yeah, then we had uh, a few spearfishes and bits and pieces and um, basically had a bit of venison but run out of pork. Bring up Mike again, want to go for a walk. Shoot back down, uh, one side of the farm we went to and had a, had a look through, the wind screwed us and, and we're cock blocked on another quarter of the farm by um, guys on motocross bikes and stuff like that. Yeah, and then we shot up to our old faithful spot, sort of last half hour of light and we did it again. The old gentleman's switcheroo again. But instead, Mike hung up the top there where we saw nothing last time and I hung down the bottom where the big sow was. Bang, he texts me, I've got several pigs up here. And I'm like, what's the chances of this? Like, anywhere you send him, pigs come to him, but he's not armed. So, bloody switcheroo in reverse. Mike's just messaged and said three decent pigs, so I'm just running up now. To run up this bloody clay trail, absolutely buggered by the time I get to the top. Right 
set his pigs out, I don't know, 180, 200, maybe more. Second or third sort of hump down into the gully there. And um, yeah, I'm watching them and nice black and white pig and then a couple of others and I see this uh, clearly pregnant sow down there. She looks pretty good. So I thought bugger it before they take off, I'll just take that shot. Good hit. See all the smoke come out of it? You hear the hit? Yeah. It was like boom. Sick. I think it was a good hit. Have it keep looking. Always happens to you, man. I was like, come on, look, you some pigs, and then within a minute, I've seen three big ones come out of that gate. And there was pigs. Get out of here. Yeah. We can test if it's on. We just need to find some blood. You think they were down in here more? Because they actually came out through that, that area. Because I could only just see the, the pig. Like, I couldn't see the like anything else because of the grass. So I could just see the pig. So I didn't know the terrain at all. Unless they were this far, they can't have been this far. Firstly, we need to find the hit, really. I just kind of wanted to find the hit first, just to find a little bit of blood, make sure there was some blood, because I'm thinking, am I following other pigs that have run? Because I've had it before where I've shot a, a deer. And then I've gone up and I haven't got to the shot, and but there's been other deer that have run away and the dogs check and I've gone and followed blooming fresh deer sign for ages and then had to go back and then, so I just wanted to make sure I'd actually f the the shot wasn't another 15 meters away or whatever. But anyway, shouldn't have overthought it because I got down to Riv and just blood everywhere. First bit of blood. Yeah. Have you got some there too? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, heaps of blood through here. Yep. So it's come through the bush. Gone to the bush. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a child the back too. I would have shot it up on that hill there. Yeah, so oh yeah. One down this way, so we're gonna get it now. Oh look at all that blood, dude. That's bleeding hard. Good dog. Look at all that blood, man. Yeah, that's getting a bit frothier. So we've got so, a blood trail. Yeah, we've got a blood trail and Mike called me up. So we did the reversal of what we did with that other pig. <laughs> get up here. So there's a pig magnet. <laughs> And now we've got a good blood trail. Once he's onto the blood trail, we'll just sniff it down hard, eh? Yeah. Yeah, right. Even better. Straight to the end. Good <laughs> All right. Man. Happy days, man. You know, that's a nice eater. Shot Rev, thanks for the lead. Imagine that without the dog and you didn't find that blood. You'd be yeah, going, yeah. Oh, what would we have? Take any turn. Yeah, the thing just comes and ends up all right down. Yeah, a bit of a pressure shot too, because you kind of like oh. roll up the hill. Oh, yeah. Try good. and take a breath. Excellent. Grapnel through the heart, big tear through the lungs there. Yeah, that's good, good bit of meat. We've got a nice layer of fat on it. So, and thanks to Rip, we found it. Back to the truck and probably call it a hunt. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I guarantee it's gonna be tasty. I'm looking forward to a roast actually. Yeah, nice. Those roasts are real good. Yeah. We've got a wee bit of a carry, so. Like you've already been shot in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Ooh. He's got it. Sweet. <laughs> Can dog, dog slobber him. Bloody hell. Surrounded. <laughs> Not gonna give way. <laughs> <coughs> Jeez. What the fuck? The rooter. Oh. <laughs> the old ass. Uh, 
make it to the creek, are we? Can't make it to the creek. This thing. Not too bad. Have a look at this. Jumping goat. Oh, it is jumping goat. Is it? I saw that. Um, I've seen that it? around. No, I haven't. I thought. Should I have a bust out? Man, because I haven't had caffeine for a while either. That'll be like. Oh, it's caffeine, yeah. We'll just have a little bit. It's delish, yeah. We need a jumping pig, actually. <laughs> That's mean, man. Whiskey and coffee. That is mm. mean, eh? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's really smooth too. It is smooth, eh? You got more. Yeah. Oh well, we'll get changed and we'll get back and hang her up. So okay. successful little little walk, eh? Yeah. Nice. Bloody nice. Yeah, back down to Mike's and then um, I actually brought him up a bit of venison that I just smacked over and he did us burgers. Now, remember, if you want to follow a lot of our like cooking stuff and that, we do quite a bit of it on stories on Instagram um, at Aquatic Rehab Spearfishing and just all the behind the scenes stuff and yeah, all these sort of bits and pieces. So yeah, feel free to get into that. And then, uh, yeah, skinned out this pig. Pretty good, Nick. Done a whole bunch of roasts and all sorts and also mixed quite a bit of uh, pork mints into some uh, venison mints which is real mean and yeah hope you enjoyed this vlog and we'll catch you on the next one